and we're back. Three, two, one, let's go. So linear systems, the elimination method. I have done a few of these videos. I'm assuming you're in grade nine or 10 and you've come here because you're interested to know how to work okay, with linear systems. I'm gonna assume that there's two lines. So I have put a check mark on line one on above and then a check mark on the line okay, at the bottom. So you have these two lines that you work with. Lines can intersect at a point, right? Point of intersection. They may never intersect when they're parallel to each other or okay, they are exactly the same line and there's one line on top of the other. So there's many intersection points in, in, in fact, infinite. So if you want, all right, to see a lot of examples, I'll kind of put up a link up above to a video I made actually for grade nine with numerous examples there. All right. Now here, I'm only going to be concentrating on the elimination method where the coefficients are decimals. So here, so my decimals, okay, so notice these are the coefficients, all right? Okay, so that's the coefficients that are in front of your variables. So I have two lines and now they're all decimals. You can't use any calculators or anything like that. Maybe it's a quiz, a test, exam, whatever, and they just want to know to see if you understand what the elimination method is. So here are the steps when you run into these decimals. Now, hopefully they're not giving you decimals that have like three or four decimal places because that would be annoying. But in any case, you can still do it using this method. So what I like to do is I get rid of decimals. So decimals, because they're in this case, they're finite. So these are just rational numbers. You can get rid of decimals any way you like. So you know that you can multiply an entire line without changing the actual line itself. So notice that in the first line, what I have is I have one decimal here, one decimal and one decimal. So when you take all the coefficients and then your um, number, okay, so it's most of the time it's on the right hand side. In this case, it's 2.1. So whatever the number actually is, which determines, I guess, your Y intercept, that particular number, you, you see where do you have the most amount of decimals in which coefficient or the number? Well, all of them in this case have just one decimal place. So if I multiply this entire line by 10, then I'm going to get rid of that decimal place. And what will happen is, so 10 times 0 0.2 is just 2x. Then it's going to be minus 7y and it's going to be 21. And voila decimal is gone. Now, the second line that you have, you do not have to multiply it by exactly the same thing. My goal is I don't want to have decimals and I can multiply that bottom line again. Now, in this case, it's not going to be by 10 because I have two decimal places in the 0 0.12. I have two decimal places in the 0 0.18 and then I have only one decimal place in 4.8. If I multiplied by 10, then I would only get rid of that 4.8, which would turn into 48. But the other two would still have decimals in it. So instead, I will multiply by 100. So depending on how many decimal places you have, that's how many of these zeros you're going to have to include okay, in your multiplic multiplication by powers of 10. So one decimal place okay, by 10. Two decimal places maximum, multiply by 100. Three decimal places, if a teacher is really mean, multiply it by 1,000. All right? So now if I multiply it by 100, that second line will turn into 12x plus 18y is equal to 480. And now you have turned this problem into integer coefficients which I've done an entire video on giving you examples. So I'm going to link a video up above so that you can take a look at the elimination method using integer coefficients because decimal coefficients, it's just change it back to integers and that's it. Now I'm going to finish this using exactly the same method as I pointed out in that video. All right. So here, when I look at this problem now, I basically have 
coefficients in front of my x and coefficients in front of my y. So you pick which one you want to be able to eliminate. So I typically will try to eliminate the one that is easier. I can right away see that 2 and 12, right? 2 actually goes into 12. So if you remember, okay, so from that link that I showed you with elimination method, okay, with integer coefficients, I basically use the lowest common multiple, right, to find so that I can multiply the two lines and then get rid of the actual uh, coefficient, in this case, the coefficient of x. So I will take, in this case, the numbers 2 and the numbers 12, and I know that my lowest common multiple, lowest common multiple, in this case, would have been 12. Both numbers go into 12. That's why. So now the two, I'm going to have to multiply by six, the 12 just by one. So I'm going to take this line and then multiply it by six. And then my second line multiplying by one will not do anything for me. So let me get rid of that. So what I'm going to have now is I'm going to have 12 X minus six times seven is 42 Y is equal to six times 21, which is going to be 100. 26. All right, I guess that's what we have there. Now the bottom one won't change 12 X plus 18 Y is equal to 480. So now because these two are the same, then in that case, I can just eliminate that variable by just simply subtracting both of these. All right, so subtract one line from the other, and then I can solve it. So these two things are gone. Now it's going to be negative 42 minus 18. All right, so that's um, it's going to be negative, and it's going to be 60y equals, and then 126 minus 480. So that's going to be a negative number, right? Let's assume that we don't have calculators. So we're going to have to subtract these. All right, so 480, so that's 10, 4, it's going to be 7. 7 minus 2 is 5, and then 4 minus 1 is 354. All right, so that's what we have there. Now, that is that. Now, nobody says that the answers are going to be easy for you. Right? Like, like when you work this out, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything is going to work out to a nice, beautiful number. Sometimes the tests are set up that way. So it's honestly, so it's easier for the teacher to mark. Uh, but in reality, it may not happen. So now solving this, so dividing both sides by negative 60, negative 60. Uh, so, all right, you're going to get y is equal to 3, 54 over 60. And that is your y. Now, of course, you can reduce this you can uh, change it into decimal if that's what they want you to do and round accordingly, whatever it is that is needed. But this is how the elimination method works. Now, once you have your Y, so whatever this is, now I'm going to cheat here a little bit because I'm going to reduce this all, all the way down. So 354, all right, and then over 60, so it's 5.9 which is 59 over 10. So that would have been in reduced form. Again, I don't know if they want you to keep it in decimal or not. If it is, you can put it as 5.9. Okay, so this is would have been 5.9 if it was just a decimal. So that's all nice and great. Now I have my y and now you have to find your x. And as you know, finding your other variable, all you're going to do is you're going to take one of the lines, so for instance, you can take this top line, I'm gonna copy it, bring it down, paste it, and now substitute for your Y. So this was 5.9, 21. Again, I don't know if they want you in fractions or whatever decimals, so you can work with that accordingly. And now you're gonna have to solve for X. All right. Now, because this isn't the first video I've done on the elimination method, I'm not going to continue this. You know, you can solve for X as you like. The bi biggest key difference is, is this, is when you are dealing with decimals, you can get rid of them 
by multiplying by powers of 10, and then it just becomes an integer coefficient problem. All right? All right, okay, so you can work this out. Somebody can put the answer back down in the comments. If you have any questions, you can send them in. Okay, thank you for watching. We'll see you in a future video, all right? So I'm gonna do another one, which is gonna be related to what happens if the coefficients are fractions. And I'll put a link up above there once it is ready, okay? Thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers. Bye.